All right, guys, excuse the mess in the background. Uh, managed to find the password to this channel, so I'm back. It's the morning after uh, the England game. We've obviously been knocked out, and I wanted to give my opinion on the game. I've seen a lot of chat, <coughs> a lot of things about Southgate, a lot of things about Kane. Um, on this channel, I like to maybe provide a different alternative view as to what I've seen. I had a few people message me saying that they used to enjoy the United videos and that uh, they wanted to see me again, so I thought I'd do another video. So obviously disappointed to go out, but completely expected. And I think <clears throat> I'm going to approach this from a different view. Uh, there's obviously the tactical side, there's the players, there's this and that. I'm going to focus on why I think England consistently go out of tournaments. Uh, there's a stat that we've been knocked out the most out of any other country uh, at this period of time in the quarters. And I think the reason is our teams are consistently naive because we have nice managers. Um, we don't have somebody that teaches the so-called dark arts. If any players do the dark arts, they get kind of in trouble. And I think it's a big skill in the game to have. And I don't think we do it enough. And I think we're very naive and we let other teams want to beat us. What I mean by that is France loved beating us this wasn't just a run-of-the-mill game for them this was we get to beat England and it's because we in the media hype everything up we create these stories in the news about how is Mbappe going to be stopped who's going to play who's going to be charged with the duty of stopping Mbappe and they just thought okay well we'll just let Mbappe hang out there and we'll create a plan for Griezmann and Griezmann had the best game of the tournament um, of his tournament, I would say. And that's because we were so heavily focused on Mbappe that we completely forgot that there's other people on the pitch to win the game. Now, when I talk about the dark arts and I talk about uh, why I don't think England win many games, or should I say uh, trophies, <clears throat> it's simply this. You have small, small chances in a tournament to go and win it and we seemingly don't take it, and we don't realise the gravity of the situation until it's too late. Now, going into this tournament, I believe we arrived in the livery-coloured LGBT plane. Uh, Harry Kane, for the whole tournament, walked around in a gifted rainbow Rolex. Players were very, very openly speaking out about the conditions and about the country, pundits were doing it we didn't showcase the opening of the world cup <clears throat> and all of this you can have your opinion on all of these things but the point is what we should have done is we should have gone into the tournament not trying to piss off every single country there and not trying to maybe maybe get the refs against us maybe get the the tournament against us this is what happens you've got to be smart this is what i'm saying england are not tournament smart we, we haven't got those smarts about us we should have gone in and we should have said uh, i'm not here to discuss any of that qatar won the bid for the world cup we're here there's great facilities they've got the stadiums we're ready to play we're here for the tournament and that's it you know even very before the game uh kicked off players were taking the knee a few of the crowd booed a few of the crowd went a bit silent um you know do their country like that i don't know but you're kind of immediately going against them <clears throat> and again i'm not saying any of these things are right or wrong i'm not voicing my opinion on them i'm just saying that as a football tactic it's not a very smart one you're gonna get the country the fans maybe the refs against you and we already have a hard enough time winning as it is so i don't think that was the first smart thing we did and i haven't heard anybody mention that um <clears throat> Now, the second thing is understanding when a game is going against you. So we got through the groups, a few, you know, a few bad moments, a few good moments. We got through the groups quite comfortably. And there's a few fouls that go on early on in the game that don't get given. Now, to me, that should tell the players, okay, there's no point diving. This ref isn't going to give anything that's massively clear cut. And we have to be smart about the situation. Now, Saka was probably our best player for, for, in my opinion of, of that evening but when Saka gets brought down I haven't heard a single pundit mention the fact that how I viewed the game was the one thing England shouldn't do and you can let me know if we're wrong if I'm wrong I thought we shouldn't sustain attacks what I mean by that 
is if we go and attack and we sustain the attack by passing it around and more and more players join, then that just means that if we give the ball away, we're going to be hit by a devastating counter. And early on, we started to sustain attacks. I think our attack should have been punchy and quick. It should have had uh, Rashford as a winger driving at them to Harry Kane having a quick fire shot. Then we clear the ball and we go again. Lots and lots of quick fire attacks. That Our speed and our skill and our dribbling ability is what makes us good. We're not Spain where we don't want to have people come up, pass the ball about and park outside the edge of the box because if you lose it, you're going to get countered. We started to get countered on very quickly, very quickly. And when Saka got brought down in that corner, it was a foul. But the lad's got to be smart. As he's going down, he's got to think to himself, this is what these top players do. As he's falling, he needs to lean on the French person. He needs to bring the French person down so the ref goes, oh, yeah, it was a free kick to England and then there was a coming together. Or, oh, it was a 50-50, we'll re-give the ball to France. But what he did was he, he fell over, he moaned, he didn't bring the player down, he didn't pull him down. They counterattacked and went on to score. Now, the referee should have given the foul. So you can say, well, how can you blame Saka when it's a, a, a referee error? That's what I'm saying. Referees do make errors. Referees do have biases. Bad things do happen in tournaments. You've got to be smart about it. And I think if you look at the game, France made way, way, way more niggly little fouls that slowed the play down and helped them than we did. I can't really think of any fouls that we made. We're too nice. Our players are too nice with it. Um, <clears throat> you don't have like a Godin or a Suarez or a, you know, just someone that makes it a bit of a hell to play against. You know, he's just that, you know, Casemiro breaking up the play in a smart way. So I wasn't too impressed with our smart, so to speak, you know, diving, not getting a free kick, diving, not getting a free kick, and then doing it a third time. It's like, okay, it's time to change your tactic now. Now, the point about the game is I think we played very well. I don't think it should be a case of Southgate out because of this specific game. You can't fire a manager because he lost to France. But what you can point to is just, again, the manager isn't drilling in that smartness, that tournament smarts that you need to win. Now, when you talk about uh, the game, people will say Harry Kane missed the penalty. But listen, anyone can miss a penalty. Messi, Ronaldo, they can all miss penalties. What I will say, and this is not post of the fact I've got clips and screenshots of me saying that unfortunately, as much as I like Harry Kane, I actually think he is a bit of a bottler because he has not been involved in these situations before. A Casemiro, a Messi, a Ronaldo, these big game players, right? Uh, and I know some of them have been knocked out and this and that. That's not the point. The point is that they've been involved in finals. They've won things. They've done this and they don't feel that pressure in the same manner. And I think when push comes to shove, Champions League final didn't perform well. The Euros, Harry Kane didn't perform well. There's League Cups, there's FA Cups where Harry Kane hasn't performed well. And because he plays for a club where he's constantly not winning things and constantly not under that absolute level of pressure. He's not used to it, and unfortunately, the pressure got to him. Now, I'm not blaming Kane for this defeat. I'm just saying that to win tournaments, you need somebody like a Giroud that will miss a few chances and will just pull out that big game moment because he's used to winning things. Um, so I, that's all I've got to say. I don't think it was Harry Kane's fault, but I think you need... Winners, for example, Trent Alexander-Arnold, right? Uh, say whatever you want, okay? Why are you not putting him in to win some, whip some balls in when it goes to 1-1? One, one? The greatest probably crosser in, in the game right now, serial winner, you know, he, he knows what it's like to turn something around and that he's not playing. Rashford, he's taken that penalty against PSG, he's done big game things. He's on the bench. He scored three goals and his reward was to never play again and to put Phil Foden on the wings. I'll just talk tactics for a few minutes. Phil Foden was out on the wing having to jump up and try and win balls. The best that Phil Foden did was when he came in the middle, floated, drove through the centre of the park, won fouls, created chances. He should have been given the Griezmann role and just said, go out there, find the space and do what you do best and then have Marcus Rashford on the left wing as a forward, left forward to basically break through the lines and score, which is what he's so good at. 
So I don't think the management was brilliant and I don't think the selection was brilliant because to me, Foden and Rashford are the most informed players going into the tournament um, and they never really got to play in their correct positions and when they did, Rashford did well and his reward was to be benched. Um, so again, when we talk about the game, they can blame the referee. The referee was tragic, but, 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 we had an opportunity to go to all. We didn't do it. And importantly, you can't go two goals behind. You can't go twice behind France, you know, one of the best teams in the world. You're asking for trouble. So when we get it to 1-1, that should have been a, whew, we got away with it. We're, we're, it's 1-1, we got away with it. Now, let's bring on the subs. Let's put the pressure on. Let's get a Trent in right midfield pinging balls. Let's get a Rashford running in behind. Let's say to Kane, whatever it may be, Kane, you've been a f fantastic player, but we're going to put uh, Ra Rashford running in through the lines and have Foden as 10 for, for 30 minutes. Right. Our manager's a bit scared to sub certain players, I feel like. Now, I'm not saying you should have subbed Kane. I'm not saying that, but... What I am saying is there are options and he never seems to take those options until it's too late. Oh, now it's 2-1, now I'll do the substitutes. We had to take that game by the scruff of the neck. We couldn't afford to go 2-1 down. Now, I do think the actual goal we conceded reminded me of Manchester United, which is a team I cover on my channel. That's the team I support. And it reminded me of when David De Gea does like a really good save and he puts it out for a corner and then you concede from the corner. Or he does a fantastic stop, the ball spills out, and then it goes in. Unfortunately, when Pickford made that save, everybody was so excited and so gassed up that they kind of forgot to get the line back high. They forgot to clear. Maguire ended up deep, having to challenge Giroud, and it came off his shoulder and went in. But I don't think it was like a disastrous tournament. This wasn't one of those ones where you go out of the quarters and say, oh, how have we gone out of the quarters? We were terrible. We're so much better than that. What I think is, it's another unfortunate wasted generation. Kane's going to be older and gone. Um, it could be Pickford, it could be Maguire's last tour at World Cup, it could be uh, Walkers. You know, it's going to be Walkers, isn't it? You know, there's all these people that are going to be going. And you've missed the boat. When it goes to one all, <clears throat> that's your ta time to say, yeah, we can't afford to go 2-1 down here. We're going to have to try something. Like Van Gaal tried. Okay, we're going out. I'm now going route one football and I'm doing this plan and I'm turning it round to go 2-2. Two, two. Southgate isn't a big game manager, um, unfortunately. Again, I'm not blaming Southgate. I'm just saying things could have been done differently. Uh, I just think we need to be a smarter team. And that is only going to come with somebody that instills it, whether it's a serial winner that comes into the dressing room and instills that in them and starts telling the players, hey, you need to bring him down. Hey, you need to do a few more cute tactical fouls, whatever it may be. Um, or it comes from a different manager. I don't know. But England just have this thing of we're a little bit fearful, we're a little bit frightened of France. I think we should have said, look, you put Mbappe with uh, Kyle Walker and we leave it at that. And you play the game and you realise after 25 minutes Griezmann's the problem and then you try and solve the Griezmann problem. You realise Foden isn't doing so well out wide and you try and you say, listen Kane, you stay way up top. Foden's going to play in the hole for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Luke Shaw had a great game. He was quite nervous. Uh, didn't really bomb up and support Foden in any way. I think yeah, Shaw and Rashford have a better connection. But that's by the by. Uh, disappointed because I think we had a real good chance because we would have gone past Morocco, I believe, and then a final, anything can happen in a final, can't it? Um, but, yeah, disappointed we've gone out. Un it's not unexpected. I just don't think the team is smart enough and everyone's talking about systems and substitutes and managers and players. But I think it just comes down to that tournament smartness and we, we're just not smart enough. So that's what all I've got to say. Leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, consider subscribing. Uh, cheers.